In this video, we're going to be discussing a type of lifting machine known as a lead screw. And on the left hand side, we have a diagram of the lead screw. And basically, the way that the machine works is that the saddle would be attached to a mass. And as the saddle raises and lowers, the mass could be lifted and lowered. Built into the mechanism, we would have a motor, and the motor would drive the lead screw forwards in order to lift the load and backwards in order to lower the load. So the important parameters which affect the speed at which the mass is being lifted or lowered is first of all what we call the lead distance. Now another way of thinking of the lead distance is the distance between two threads. When we refer to bolts we call this the pitch. So in this case it will be the vertical distance between two threads. So if we were to view this on a larger scale we would have our lead screw, we would have threads, and the lead distance would be the distance between two threads, like so. So for every revolution of the lead screw, the mass is going to be lifted through the lead distance. Now in the bottom left hand corner I have some data. First of all I have the effective diameter of the lead screw itself. And I also have the coefficient of friction that would exist between the rotating components. I have the mass that we're lifting as 185 kilograms. And I have two different lead distances. The first lead distance we're going to work with is 4 millimeters, And then we're going to examine the effects on the efficiency and the amount of torque required to lift the mass when we increase the lead distance to 18 millimeters. So the first thing that is important to know is the theory we've seen previously still applies. So if we want to determine a velocity ratio, then we can either consider the velocity of the load and the velocity of the effort, or we can consider the displacement of the load and the displacement of the effort. So our velocity ratio is the displacement of the effort over the displacement of the load. So if we consider one cycle or one turn of the lead screw, then the distance travelled by the outside of the lead screw is going to be the circumference. If we imagine this viewed from the top, we have the top of the lead screw, and in one full revolution, the distance travelled is going to be the circumference of the lead screw. Well, the circumference of the lead screw is either 2 pi r, or written another way, pi d pi times the diameter. And when one full revolution is completed, the mass is going to have been raised through the lead distance as we mentioned previously, because in one full revolution, we're going to move the distance between the threads. So if we work with our first lead distance, we have over lead distance one like so. Therefore the velocity ratio in the first instance, when we have a lead distance of four millimeters, is going to be pi times the diameter, or we can write that as 12 pi. Note that I can work in millimeters so long as the diameter and the lead distance both remain in millimeters. So that gives me a velocity ratio equal to 9.42. It's a ratio so it doesn't have any units. It's basically a comparison of the distance moved by the effort when compared to the distance moved by the load. Now the next thing we're going to calculate is the efficiency. And the efficiency of a lead screw has the following formula. Efficiency equals tan alpha divided by tan of alpha plus beta. Now just to describe what each of these terms alpha and beta are, alpha is the angle of the slope of each of our threads. So because each of our threads are at an angle, over here on our diagram, alpha is the angle of the slope of the threads. Now the way that we calculate alpha is as follows. Alpha equals tan to the minus one, of the lead distance 
in this case LD1 over pi D. So it's basically tan to the minus 1 of the inverse of the velocity ratio. If we plug our numbers in, we have tan to the minus 1, 4 over pi D, or 4 over 12 pi, giving us a value of alpha equal to 6.057 degrees. Now beta is something called the friction angle. We have a coefficient of friction of 0.3 degrees, but what we can do is find an equivalent angle to represent that. And the way that we do that is as follows, tan to the minus 1 of the coefficient of friction. Well, tan to the minus 1 of our coefficient of friction is tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.3. And tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.3 is an equivalent angle of 16.699 degrees. So when we look at these two angles, we have the angle of pitch of the threads and we have an equivalent friction angle, we can see that friction has a huge impact on the efficiency of our machine. So now we can calculate our efficiency because our efficiency is tan of alpha, or the pitch angle, 6.057, divided by tan of the sum of those two angles, so the 6.057 plus the 16.699, giving us an efficiency of our lead screw equal to 0.2530 or 25.30%. OK, let's move the value of our efficiency up the page and then we can clear some space. OK, now we have our velocity ratio and our efficiency, we can work out our mechanical advantage because mechanical advantage is just velocity ratio times efficiency. The important thing to remember here is that it's the efficiency expressed as a decimal. So we found that the efficiency was 25.30, which is actually 0 0.2530 as a decimal. So our mechanical advantage, we know our velocity ratio, is 9.42. We know our efficiency is 0 0.2530, giving us a mechanical advantage equal to 2.383. Again, it's a ratio, so we don't need to add any units to that. So in previous tutorials, we mentioned how mechanical advantage was equal to the force of the load divided by the force of the effort. Therefore, the force of the effort must equal the force of the load divided by the mechanical advantage. So the force of the effort then equals the force of the load. Now we need to take a little bit of care here because we have the mass of the load and the equivalent force is the weight. Weight is mass times gravity. Therefore, the weight of the load, or the force of the load, is its mass of 185 kilograms times gravity of 9.81. That would give us the weight of the load. We need to divide that by the mechanical advantage, 2.383, and that will give us the force that needs to be exerted by the lead screw. Now that comes out as 761.59. We're going to do one final calculation, and this time we're going to calculate the torque that the motor must provide in order to lift the load. So torque is force times distance, and the torque that needs to be applied is the force of the effort, or the force that needs to be applied, 
times a distance. Now the distance that we need to use here is the radius of the lead screw. And the reason it's the radius of the lead screw is because the effort force is being applied at the outside edge of the lead screw. That will be the point of contact of the force. Therefore the torque that's being applied by the motor is the force of the effort, 761.59, times the radius of the lead screw. Now we need to remember to work in metres here. So the lead screw has a radius of 6 millimetres, therefore it has a radius of 0 0.006 metres. We need to divide 6 millimetres by 1000. And that gives us a torque applied by the motor equal to 4.57 newton metres. Let's repeat those calculations for the second lead distance. So the first thing that we calculated was the velocity ratio. And we said that the velocity ratio was the distance moved by the effort. 12 pi divided by the lead distance. Well this time the lead distance has increased to 18. So we're going to see a significant drop in our velocity ratio. And in fact our velocity ratio is now 2.094. We're also going to see a change in our efficiency because our angle alpha is going to change. And our angle alpha is going to be tan to the minus one of the pitch distance, 18, over the circumference, 12 pi. It's exactly the same formula as we used previously, except we have a new lead distance. Now this gives us an angle of 25.523. Note that the angle of alpha is significantly larger because our lead distance is significantly larger. But our value of beta is going to be unchanged because we have the same coefficient of friction. Therefore beta is still tan to the minus 1 of f, or tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.3, and that's 16.699. Degrees, that's the effective angle. We can go on and calculate our efficiency because our efficiency was tan of alpha, tan of 25.523, divided by tan of alpha plus beta. Sixteen point six nine nine giving us an efficiency value equal to 52.62%. Next we can calculate our mechanical advantage because we said mechanical advantage was the velocity ratio times the efficiency. But we need to express the efficiency as a decimal. So we have 2.094 for our velocity ratio times our efficiency as a decimal 0 0.5262 giving us a mechanical advantage this time equal to just 1.102 so the lead screw is no longer offering much mechanical advantage but nonetheless, we can calculate the force that needs to be applied by the lead screw because the force of the effort was equal to the force of the load or the weight of the mass divided by the mechanical advantage. So we had 185 times 9.81 for the weight that's being lifted divided by a lower mechanical advantage this time of 1.102, giving us a force equal to 1647.07 and that's the force that needs to be applied in newtons and so finally we was able to calculate the torque that the motor needed to apply 
using the force of the effort times the radius. And in this case we have 1647.07 times a radius of 6 millimetres expressed in metres, giving us a torque requirement equal to 9.88 newton metres. So what we've seen here is even though our efficiency has more than doubled to 52.62% from 25.30%, the torque requirement of 9.88 newton meters is roughly double the previous torque requirement of 4.57 newton meters. The important thing here is we're using less energy, but we're needing to apply a greater torque in order to lift the load. So providing our motor is capable of applying the required torque, we're going to use roughly half the amount of energy in lifting the mass.